In Jewish beliefs, there were four physical conditions in mankind that could only be corrected by God. Um, it was believed that when God would send the Messiah, his son, that the sign that would prove to the Pharisees who he was would be um, the, the, the four messianic miracles is what they called it. So it's four specific miracles. Let's look at the first messianic um, miracle. It was leprosy. So leprosy, they believed, was inflicted by God and it can only be healed by God. So if you look back in the Old Testament, it records where um, men and women were inflicted with leprosy. You will find that the first instance was Moses in Exodus 4 verse 6. When he placed his hand in his bosom and he pulled it out, his hand was um, um, leprous. Okay, white, it was a white skin disease. And then he put it back and then God removed it. God, only pro God proved that he was the only one that could um, heal leprosy. The second one was Miriam. When she spoke against Moses, God also inflicted her because Moses was his anointed servant. And so Moses prayed for her, asked God to remove the leprosy, and she was cured. God removed it. King Uzziah entered the holy place um, to burn an, unlawfully, an unlawful incense on the um, brazen or the golden altar, and that was an offense against God's temple. God inflicted him with leprosy. And then the first Gentile to be inflicted with leprosy was Naaman. We all know the story about Naaman. God cleansed him by instructing Isaiah to go, Elijah to go and help him in 2 Kings 5 verse 1. So the first messianic um, miracle that was recorded was in Mark 1 verse 40 to 44. So after cleansing a leper, Yeshua instructed him to go and show himself to the Pharisees. He had to go and he had to go take a, a guild office, which, uh, offering, which was an off offering of sacrifice that Moses commanded he took. Um, so since this first leper was um, cured, this sort of sparked the investigation of the Sanhedrin you know, it, it sort of like alerted them to say that, okay, nobody has ever cured leprosy. Yeah, this guy comes and since there was never an Israelite that was cured of leprosy, this obviously sparked the entrance, interest of the um, Sanhedrin and they began to investigate this whole situation. So that was basically what their role was. The Sanhedrin, Sanhedrin was... Um, you know, it was their job to investigate everybody who comes and claims that they were the Messiah. They would look out for this Messiah. Everybody was expecting this um, seed of Abram, you know, to come at a certain time and um, perform all these miracles. So when they saw this first miracle happen, this obviously just sparked their interest in Jesus and they wanted to know more about him. So they would quietly just follow him and just observe to see um, how he would go about healing, how he would go about teaching and see if obviously this matches to the messianic um, miracles that they have. Um, the second messianic miracle is a deaf and dumb spirit okay or a mute spirit to be more specific so the jews practiced um exorcism which is casting out demons and so they had a a, a formula that they would go about um, that involved three different steps so they would speak to the demon asking it its name um, the demon will then reply with the voice of the possessed person and then they would cast out the demon by its name calling it out of the person of the human by its name that was the rules that they set in place and that was the only way they would go about casting out demons so Yeshua used the formula um, when he casted out the demon at the uh, gathering Gatherings, that island of, on, of the Gadarenes, right? He, he performed a, uh, an exorcism um, at that island. And so um, when he asked the demons what his name was, he said, Legion. 
for we are many and then called him out by his name and obviously there were many uh, many demons and they went into the herd of pigs was that was there and obviously ran into the um, into the sea we all know the story so Jew, the Jewish priests and rabbis or these people that would um, cast out demons would obviously operate according to these specific, um, you know, the specific formula that they've put in place. So in the account in Mark chapter 9 verse 14 to 29, we find that this boy was brought to Jesus and um, you know, already the Sanhedrin was watching Jesus and investigating him and so following him every day, following his footsteps, trying to see what he's up to on a daily basis. To obviously, he's been marked now. So in this incident, the boy was brought to Jesus and the disciples could not, could not heal him. The disciples could not cast out the, 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 the demon. With that, Jesus then just um, asked how long he's been possessed, and then they said since childbirth. So that is enough time to prove that you know this boy has been possessed for quite a uh, quite a long time, you know, a good couple of years. And with that, Jesus spoke to the demon, and he said, "Deaf and mute demon, come out of this boy." That's basically what he said. So the, um, the demon put up a performance and whatnot, obviously came out, obeyed God, uh, Jesus' authority. And with that, you find that the boy was just laying there. He couldn't move, but then Jesus picked him up and he said he was fine. So this sparked another series of, you know, people um, realizing what had happened, that Jesus just spoke to the demon without even asking it what its name was, because it's a mute demon so you won't be able to get his name out of this boy the third messianic miracle was the birth defects okay so the hebrew sages at the time believed that birth defects were punishment from god for the sins of the child or of the child's ancestors so somebody had to have been guilty of some certain sin so when a child was born blind or deaf, or he had a certain birth defect, um, you know, the sin would be, um, uh, would have been caused by one of his ancestors. In Exodus 34 verse 76, it says that he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the father. So that, that was enough reason for these um, sages to believe that these, the, the, when this child was brought to Jesus, that him or his parents sinned. So when Yeshua and his disciples encountered the man that was blind, he was born blind, the disciples wanted to know who had sinned. They asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents? This is in John 9 verse 2. So Yeshua told them that neither the man or his parents were, were, have sinned. And in this particular case, he was born blind so that the sign... Um, the Pharisees were looking for would be fulfilled basically. So Yeshua then placed mud, which is symbolic of sin and impurity, um, you know, with some of his spit. He made a little bit of mud and then he placed it on the man's eyes and he told him to go and wash in the pool of Salem. So you find that that was another miracle that, that Yeshua performed, proving that he was the Messiah and he has fulfilled one of the messianic um, miracles you know the scribes were so interested in what had happened and when he said go and show yourself to the priest um, you know he's gone and he showed them that he can see after so many years i mean as a child you can see they started then scrutinizing him and investigating him and asking him all these types of questions if you read the story you'll find that they begin to ask him did you see who healed you you know, were you blind? Were you really actually truly blind? Um, were you blind from birth? You know, they needed to make sure that this was solid proof that that was one of the messianic um, miracles that was performed by Jesus, by Yeshua. And so this guy just said, no, you know, they can, they got his parents involved. Was he blind? So that was basically the reason why that investigation um, you know, was so intense. 
because they needed to make sure this is the third messianic miracle that we have witnessed happening and we have proof that this guy you know more and more proof that this guy is who he says he is and this might just be the messiah the son of god um so in that they then investigated and questioned this man and questioned this man and he said he never saw he was blind he never saw the person who actually healed him when he opened up his eyes he could see and he was just told to go and show himself to the pharisees and so you know this was also just one of the reasons that sort of just got the pharisees to to really be on their guard every day following Jesus. So what the Sanhedrin then basically did was just investigate. So their work was just to investigate and then just follow him silently and take notes basically of what it is that he's doing up to a point where they will begin to investigate him verbally. So you'll find that um, in the crowds they would be there they would be in the crowd in the area and while Jesus would perform these miracles because he is God he knew what was in their hearts. So you'll find that there was in instances where God, where Jesus would perform a miracle or he would give them a teaching, bring a teaching, say a parable, but then the word of God would say, tell us that um, Jesus knew what was in their hearts and then begin to answer them like that. They haven't even said a thing or asked a question, but Jesus just knew what they were thinking. And that also in itself would prove that he was he was the messiah because he could discern the last um, messianic miracle was raising the dead after three days we all know the familiar story um, after four days the familiar story about lazarus okay lazarus was in the tomb the his sisters called for jesus to come um, you know jesus on purpose purposely <laughs> Um, arrived late to find him already buried in a tomb and he's been there for four days um, so the Jews at that time believed that the spirit was still attached to the body somehow for three days and when it gets to the fourth day that the body will start to decay so it will start to decompose and um, you know then it begins to smell and then obviously the body begins to rot so in this instance Jesus had to wait four days he had to wait for four days and then show up to prove this would be the last messianic um, miracle that he would perform to prove that he is to prove to the pharisees that he is the messiah obviously a lot of people is following him now his disciples believe who he says he is his followers believe who he says he is most of the people whom he has healed believed who he was and so this was basically just to prove a point to the, the sages, the rabbis, the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees that this is the Messiah, the Son of God. So with that, when he raised Lazarus from the dead, this has now begun to really, um, you know, uh, cause the Pharisees to challenge, he, challenge his messiahship. All right. He allowed his dear friend Lazarus to die from the sickness even though it was within his power to heal him okay so he waited to go um, to go to the home of Lazarus until it was the fourth day after his death in performing the sign it would just force the Sanhedrin to declare that Yeshua was the Messiah instead the chief priest made plan to kill him and that's when it all started when they realized We've seen him perform the fourth messianic miracle, so there's no doubt that this is not the Messiah, this is not the Son of God. The reason why they um, refuse to believe it, I mean, they, they've seen it with their eyes, they've heard all the testimonies, um, was because, you know, he needed to fulfill the title of being Messiah, at the time they were, you know, the, the, the Pharisees had quite some um, a high position and power within the Roman government. And this would obviously just interfere with the power that they have. They weren't ready for the Messiah. They weren't ready for the Messiah to come at that time, even though he was there. And, you know, their understanding was he was going to overpower the Roman govern government and then he would be in charge and he would be in control and um, not realizing that his kingdom is not 
of this earth. It is the heavenly kingdom that he was trying to establish or busy establishing. And in their minds, you know, all their power. So it, must, it was more of a selfish and prideful kind of a, a spirit that they were operating under. So you find it with this four messianic um, miracles that Yeshua came and he proved. He proved to the men, he proved to scholars, he proved to Sanhedrin, he proved to the sages, to the Pharisees, that he was the Messiah. And because he did everything according to the book, it just frustrated the Pharisees more. And this was cause for them to, to got him to, um, um, you know, to, to send him to the cross. Eventually, he was crucified for being who he was. And this was just so that they could live their lives of luxury. They could live their lives of power, the power that they have, um, you know, exercised over all the Jewish people, the freedoms that they had and all that. They were just fearful that all this is coming to an end and there will be no more Pharisees and there will be no more Sanhedrin and they could not carry on the way that they have been carrying on, making money, selling um sacrifices in the temple and doing what they had to do to survive and most of it was in an ungodly manner in an ungodly way but Jesus coming and proving that he was the Messiah he was the Son of God you know just um, just ruined the plans 